Welcome back to the shop. Today, we're gonna to be moving right along with my retrofit, my old CNC lathe. When I last left off, I'd just gotten all of the electrical components put together and prepped for final assembly. Today, we're gonna to be putting everything together and getting things up and running. We did the electrical side of things last time, so we're gonna start with the mechanical side of things now. Lo and behold, it works. So now let's make something to celebrate. I figured that a pond made out of some of this 3 8 aluminum rod would be good. Partly because ponds are almost like a cliche lathe test part, and also because chess is enjoying some uncharacteristic popularity these days. So I drew up a little pond in Fusion 360 and tried my hand at some cam. Let's uh, see how it goes. Oh, 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 
that went really well. It turns out CAM isn't actually all that hard. So now let's try something actually useful. This machine didn't come with a chuck key, and I haven't bought one because I haven't really been using the machine. And now that I have been using it, I've been relying on this absolute abomination. You're looking at a cheese grade M8 bolt with some flats filed on. I think we can do better, so let's make a chuck key. Okay, so that sound you just heard was the machine losing steps. And at this point, past me that's operating the machine is pretty sure something's gone wrong, but he's gonna wait a minute and just watch before stopping the machine. So what happened here is that my rapids were too fast, and the machine uses stepper motors and is what's called an open loop machine, so this became a problem. Open loop machines don't have any feedback, meaning that the controller tells the machine to move and trusts that the machine moved to where it was supposed to. The controller has no way of actually verifying whether or not the machine moved. Stepper motors lose torque at high speeds. This means that the faster they spin, the less torque it takes to stall that motor out. And that's what happened here. During this particular move, the stepper tried to spool up to rapid the carriage back, and it stalled. The machine, thinking that everything was fine, continued on its merry way except now it was trying to carve the shape of the tip of the chuck key into the middle of the body of the chuck key. Now this is an easy enough thing to fix, I'll just turn down the rapids a touch and rerun that operation.
So now we've ended up with this, which I'll be the first to admit is not exactly what we're going for. We've got this big step in the middle from where we, where the, the machine missed steps and I ended up having to flip the part around a little early and get a little bit creative. So I've rerun the cam, but with boundaries between the front face here and where we're gonna hold it in the chuck, which is gonna be 40 millimeters back from the nose of the part out here, right, like so. And so we're just gonna run through and turn down this OD and turn our taper in and everything should work hunky-dory. All right, well, now we've got all of our test pieces, our pawns. I ran another one just to see how it turned out. And it did pretty good. And our chuck key. So this guy takes our little handle with our nice rounded over ends, drops in there, and uses an M6 set screw to hold everything in place. And we can check with the ruler and get our length nicely set and lock it down. This was uh, just kind of an arbitrary length that happened to fit nicely in my hand. All right, well, all things considered, that went pretty well for my first experience running a CNC lathe. The machine ran well, at least as near as I can tell, and now I've got a nice working chuck key, and I can pitch this little guy in the scrap bin where he belongs. Now, you may have noticed a couple things that made you scratch your head a little bit, especially if you watched the last video. First off, I used my mill to drill a hole in the center of this round part. A job that seems like an ideal task for a lathe. Um, the issue here is tool holding, and namely that I have done. Or, well, this little tool post is the only tooling I have. Um, so I'm going to need to get some tooling and some tool holding before I can really get things running as I would like on this machine. 
The other item is that in the last video, I made a big deal about setting this lathe up to cut threads. And then I didn't do any threading here. Well, I used a tap, but that doesn't count. Now, here, that's more because of operator inexperience. Like I said, this was my first crack at running any cam or any CNC machine. So I want to get a couple projects under my belt so that I have a good idea of how the machine is actually supposed to run. That'll help me when I'm diagnosing machine problems, because I'll know it's a machine problem and less likely an operator problem if, or more likely when, things go wrong with threading. Well, it looks like my shop has exploded again, so I should probably be off to deal with that. But thanks for taking the time to check the project out. If you're interested in shop projects like this, please consider subscribing. I'd appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, uh, drop them down below. And thanks again for checking the project out.